Hello, welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to AR Programming Using Scala. We've been talking about for loops uh, for the last two videos, and we continued that with this video. In this video, we're going to talk about if guards on for loop. There are another option that we can put inside of our of our for loops. Um, and so let's look at what those are like. So if we run our RAPL here, uh, in the previous video, I did something like this to only print out even values. So 1, 2, 10, if i modulo 2 is 0, print line i. And that approach works just fine when you are using the loop as a statement. But what if I want to use it, so instead of printing it, I want to yield something. So in this case, I want to, if i is of i modulo 2 is 0, I want to yield i, but I want to have it so it doesn't yield the odd numbers. Well, if I try this here, that's, uh, whoops. let's include our yield. Um, we get something that's kind of weird here. We do get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, but we also get units, and that's because if you have an if statement and it doesn't have an else, when the else is, uh, w when the, the value is false, you get back unit. So, so that's a bit problematic, and we wind up with a vector of any val, which also is, is not quite what we want. Uh, and the problem is there really isn't anything good that I could put here. Maybe I could do something like that, and then maybe I feel like doing res3.filter of um, something greater than or equal to zero and then I get my even values, but that was kind of a pain. The better way to do this is, and when you're using a yield, how you should do this, is to take and throw this if inside of the for. Okay, so you have the ability to put if guards on your uh, for loops, and you can do this by putting a semicolon, and then saying the if that you want, if i modulo 2, is zero. Turns out that for the if guards on a for loop, the parentheses are optional. Uh, you can decide if you want to put them in just so they look consistent. And now, when it yields, the advantage is that anything that doesn't pass this condition is actually skipped. Okay, so um, so we can uh, you know use the, the yield and have it so that there are the various values that, that are not accepted in here. Um, so let's do an example. Once again, we'll do something like with, with some random numbers. Val nums equals array dot fill. If I make a hundred random numbers and uh, I could do something with a for loop. So val small nums is equal to the for loop where I take the x value from nums, but I only want to keep it if x is less than 0.5. And then let's say I want to yield x squared. Okay, so I want the squares of all of the numbers that were less than 0.5. I don't want to have the square for the larger values. Okay. And that would give me this, and I can show that indeed there are significantly fewer, uh, roughly half of the values were less than 0.5 for this sampling of random numbers. Um, I would get this. We, in the previous video, I did something where I had some points, and so if I take random points, uh, so I generate a hundred random points and I do them in the form of math.random math.random So I have a hundred random points uh, and now I want to uh, calculate let's say I want to calculate the distances but I only want the distances for the ones that are inside of the unit circle well, then I can do val 
distances equals four. And once again, I'm going to use the pattern here. I'm going to make an X and a Y that are pulled out for points. But I only want the ones where the, uh, where the square plus Y times Y is less than or equal to one. Okay. I don't need to take a square root here, uh, and, but I do need an if. Let's go back and let's put in an if. Uh, because I only care about the magnitude. And then what I want to do is yield here a the value of math.square root of x times x plus y times y. And then I get all of the uh, distances for things that are inside of the unit circle. And if I were to ask how many of those, th those there are, there's 74 that were inside of the unit circle. Now, I'll go ahead and throw in one extra topic here because it just stands out that I have this exact same expression repeated twice. And so another option we have with our for loops is the ability to introduce variables. So, oh, that's not necessarily what I wanted to do. By introducing this variable, then I can use it there. And then I can also return math.square root of dsqr. And I get the same result that I had before, but I didn't repeat this expression because I had it included as a variable. So uh, we've now seen three types of things that we can put inside of our for loops. We have a generator like this, which will run through a collection. We can put in variable declarations, and we can put in if guards. And these if guards are particularly useful when you are using it as an expression, so when you have a yield. If you're using it as a statement, you can just embed an if inside. But the thing is with a, because then you can choose to not do something if the condition is false. But when, you're, when you have a yield and you only want to yield for certain values, that is where this, uh, the uh, if guard comes into play. So we have a few more options to talk about in the for loop, and we will look at those.